Hey Mustangs, in these notes we're going to take a look at protein synthesis, but there's a couple of things we need to do before we get started. Uh, first, you need your notes, um, your fill in the blank notes to be printed out. So if you go to our class website here, um, you're going to click on protein synthesis notes. Uh, it's a two page note, so you could print it front and back, or you could print them into uh, two per page. Um, if you remember how to do that, there's directions for printing that up here um, before you actually start the notes. Um, and before we actually start the notes, we kind of have to review things that we already know. Okay, um, so there's three, uh, four, sorry, main questions that you should know at this point. Uh, so first, what is DNA? So you should be able to answer that question before you get started. Second, what are the units called that we connect together to make DNA? Third, what are the base pairing rules for DNA? And finally, what is DNA replication and why and when does DNA replication happen? So make sure you can answer each of these four questions before you get started with these notes. Very, very important that you could do this first before getting into the notes. All right, let's go ahead and see. Um, we're going to be looking at protein synthesis. Basically, protein synthesis, uh, we talked about this last class. Um, synthesis means to make, so making a protein. And in order to make the protein, you have to be able to read the DNA instructions. And scientists can actually do that. Scientists can take a sequence of DNA that has the A's, G's, T's, and C's, and actually read the instructions to see how a protein is built and what that protein is going to be and do. Um, so protein synthesis is actually the process of reading the instructions in DNA. So background information first. So DNA review. Remember that DNA um, is the basic instructions for all living things on how to build a living thing, how to maintain a living thing, and all living things on our planet have that. Uh, nucleotides are the units that connect together to make DNA and one nucleotide has three parts to it. It has here a phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar, and a base. Remember don't get caught up on the shapes as long as you know that a phosphate connects to a deoxyribose sugar connects to a nitrogenous base. It's good. Okay. Um, the side-by-side, -side, the sequence of A's, G's, T's, and C's are what spell out the instructions. Um, so here, this would be a sequence, A's, G's, T's, and C's here. Um, and this is what would spell out certain instructions in the DNA. All right, those instructions um, are then for creating your own unique traits, how you're going to be built. Um, this is the reason why you look different than your mom and dad, why you look different than your brothers and sisters, because you have a unique set of DNA instructions that is really a combination um, of your based on uh, your mom's instructions, your dad's instructions that you received. All right, uh, now here, here's an example of the DNA sequence um, spelling out instructions. Here, this is a small piece of the sequence that spells out instructions for making insulin. Um, now humans make insulin and also cows make insulin. Um, so this is the sequence here that spells out instructions, just part of the sequence, so not the full instructions for making insulin. And when you look at this, it, you know, A's, G's, T's, and C's, all spelling it out. Right now when you look at it, you just see a whole bunch of A's, G's, T's, and C's. Um, after we're done looking about tr learning about transcription and translation, you're going to be able to actually read and find out how the protein's built and if the protein's going to be normal, if there's mutations, all that stuff. So here's human insulin and here's cow insulin down here. Now, let's think about this. What do all mammals have in common? Well, there's three basic things. Uh, they have fur, live births, and they produce milk for their young. Okay, so we're going to take that last one, producing milk for their young. So does cow's milk taste like goat milk or even human milk? And the answer to that, if you've ever tasted cow's milk and goat milk, there's a huge, huge difference in the flavor. We're, if you grew up in the United States, you're probably used to cow milk. Um, goat milk does not taste the same. Um, and there's a reason for that. Now, both of them are producing milk, but their DNA instructions are slightly different. So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. So here's instructions spelled out for building proteins in right whales. Here's instructions for making uh, milk proteins in sperm whales, a porpoise, giraffe, hippo. All of these are mammals. All of them produce milk, and their DNA sequences spell out the proteins that they produce for their milk. Here's a cow, camel, deer, pig, 
Kari, a rhino. Okay? And if you look at the instructions, some of them seem similar. Like if you look at the instructions for a cow to a camel, you're like, wait, that starts with A, that starts with T, G, T. Oh, there is some similarities here as you go through. Um, this one, A to deer, A, G, T, C. Oh, there's a difference, C and T. So the instructions are what cause different proteins to be built. And when different proteins are built, there's going to be a different result. Okay, so the milk will probably look a little bit different. It will definitely taste different. Um, but it all comes down to our amazing DNA instructions and the sequence, the particular, the very sp specific arrangements of A's, G's, T's, and C's. All right, so most of your DNA is actually junk DNA. In humans, we have three billion base pairs. Okay, so three billion base pairs make up our DNA. And yet most of that is actually what we call junk DNA. It doesn't have any instructions at all. So if you were actually to look at all of human DNA, most of it has no instructions for making proteins. Um, and scientists uh, conveniently came up with a name as junk DNA, since it doesn't have any instructions. The parts of our DNA that actually do have instructions are called genes. So right here. So genes are the parts of our DNA that actually do have instructions. So let me show you an example here. So let's say this is a piece of our DNA. There's A's, G's, T's, and C's all spelling out uh, different things here. Uh, there's our base pairing rules, A to T, G to C. Well, not everything in our DNA is instructions for making a protein. So the sections that do actually have instructions for making proteins are called genes. So maybe in this DNA here, the sequence from here to here has instructions for making a protein. All of this stuff is just junk DNA. Okay? So that's where the term gene comes from. Um, not the kind of genes that you wear, but you, you've probably heard it before. Oh, I got that gene from my mom. I got that gene from my dad. So when you're talking about a gene, you're talking about a specific section of the DNA that actually has instructions for building proteins, not the junk DNA. Okay. Now, genes um, can be different lengths. There's genes for eye color, hair color, um, whether you have a widow's peak, the shape of your nose, the color of your eyes, all these different things. There's genes, sections of your DNA that have instructions for making proteins to uh, determine those traits. Okay. Now, different genes are different lengths. So the gene for eye color might be you know, thousands of base pairs long, while the gene uh, for having a widow's peak might be millions of base pairs long. Okay. Um, so genes, sections of your DNA that have instructions for making proteins, um, can be um, different lengths. So far, and the number changes every now and then, um, we've discovered about 20,000 genes uh, in human DNA. So out of those three billion base pairs, um, we have found 20,000 different genes, 20,000 different sections of our DNA that um, have instructions for making a protein. Now remember, very, very important thing, the instructions in your genes, so we talk about DNA being a set of instructions, those instructions are for building a protein, and then those proteins will determine traits, um, what happens in your cells on a daily basis, what you can pass on, all that information.